my chairman of the governing council of this great university, and of course, doubling up as a chairman for today's occasion, a vice chancellor, a pro vice chancellor, a registrar, Nananum, members of the university council, provosts, deans, directors, and heads of department, members of convocation, director, design thinking and innovation hub of this great university, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, distinguished invited guests, and of course, our main sponsors, staff and students, it is with the greatest pleasure that I come back to this famous school's campus to be part of the epoch-making event of the inauguration of the design thinking and innovation hub of the university, the University of Competitive Choice. I'd like to express gratitude to the planning committee and, of course, to the Pro Vice Chancellor for so generously inviting me to be part of this program. I must say this is a program that I would not have liked to miss for anything. As your chancellor, I have followed with keen interest with my, and with my joy, the efforts and strides which have been made by the entire university to reposition itself, to be able to contribute meaningfully to the development of our beloved country. I am reliably informed of numerous cutting-edge uh, research outcomes from our various colleges in the university which are impacting significantly on the general populace. And how can I, how can I forget the <clears throat> great accolade we won this year, which was announced late last year. And here, and of course, I'm referring to the Times Higher Education World Universities Ranking 2022, which has this great university as the best in Ghana and West Africa, the fourth in Africa, and the world's number one in terms of the impact of our research, and best, best among the new entrant universities to the competition. I think we deserve a louder round of applause. As your chancellor, I couldn't be prouder. Mr. Chairman, as I listened to our vice chancellor deliver his inaugural address, investiture address, on August 1st, 2020, I knew a day like this would come. Because I cannot forget the passion with which he articulated his vision of making our university, the University of Choice, an entrepreneurial university. His vision, to quote, is to reposition UCC as a global hub of creative thinkers, offering demand-driven programs integrated with practical entrepreneurial courses and actively translating the products of the innovative research for sustainable development. End of quote. For mission, he said he would, again quote, ensure for sustainable development for mission, he said, would ensure that UCC creates a niche by providing quality, equitable, and inclusive education that empowers its graduates to be independent, lifelong learners, and responsible citizens who have the passion for job creation while contributing to public service. What a vision. What a mission. What we are witnessing this morning, ladies and gentlemen, is a practical and evidence-based demonstration of what our Vice Chancellor promised us on this investiture. Can we give him a round of applause, please? <laughs> and that is why I'm particularly elated to see champions and future champions of industry gathered here today to not only support the Vice Chancellor to outdoor the design thinking innovative 
rehab facility, but also to further deepen the academia industry collaboration, which will go a long way to groom young students of this university and others into great businessmen and women with the right focus and business ethics that will make them to succeed in their endeavors. With my background and experience in business, I can confidently vouch that this nation stands to benefit immensely if brilliant and enthusiastic young students are prepared with the right attitude to work and an entrepreneurial mindset as these will make them excel in whatever fields they find themselves. Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, developing the critical thinking mindset and entrepreneurship especially among the youth, is something that is very dear to my heart as chancellor of this university. And therefore, I'm happy that the university has embraced a new order of grooming the next generation of leaders from its ongoing and future programs. Indeed, the determination of the university management, faculty, and everybody else to think into developing innovative facilities to support the training of future leaders the generation X and Z, to be creative thinkers who will look beyond joining the bandwagon of job seekers is something which is highly commendable. Our expectation as leaders today is that these generational cohorts would work assiduously to create their own jobs and further team up with others to develop solutions that will help solve societal problems and challenges. Mr. Chairman, the world is facing unprecedented challenges, driven in a large part by accelerating globalization, the aftermath of COVID-19 COVID pandemic, faster rate of technological change and developments, and of course, more recently, the needless war in Ukraine. Based on this continuous transformation, many academic governmental and private institutions are emphasizing the agency of changing the educational system to make it more responsive to the present and the future needs of society. Indeed, Mr. Chairman, students now have to be prepared for jobs that have not yet been created. Let me emphasize, students are being prepared for jobs which have not yet been created, for technologies that have not yet been invented, and to solve social problems that have not yet been anticipated. This clearly demands a design thinking attitude and not business as usual. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, the launching of the design thinking and innovative app today has come at an opportune time as Ghana, our dear country, and indeed the entire world has found it necessary to introspectively re-examine the way we conduct ourselves, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic has awakened all of us to our state of unpreparedness for solving the transformational challenges confronting mankind. Presently, universities all over the world are working assiduously to produce useful global citizens by practically inculcating 21st century skills into the students they train. Both of these students and uh, institutions are helping the young students to put their design thinking tools into practice in the real world by making them spend time with business owners and project managers to help optimize their services to clients. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, the timing of this launch is most apt. I personally believe, Mr. Chairman, that the design thinking and innovation have been launched today can be a conduit through which creative and enthusiastic students from the SHS, UCC, and even lecturers who have come out with Stefanos research findings of industrial value have been incubated and groomed to develop business principles that could help solve problems within all sectors of the Ghanaian economy. My own experience in industry tells me that a lot of multidisciplinary 
and creative works occur outside the lecture room. A well-managed design thinking innovative hub, therefore, will go a long way to unearth, to discover talents in multidisciplinary spheres on the university campus. In other words, we will be able to do what we're doing today, raise creative problem solvers among the students in the institution, and by so doing, help create a culture of design thinking where everyone talks about and applies what they learn. This will not only help to create multiple opportunities for building a community around design thinking in the university, but also help a number of organizations tackle problems that confront them. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I would say design thinking is an iterative problem-solving process that emphasizes empathy for those who benefit from a solution. It is, of course, structured to help students and incubators solve issues by involving them in the process of designing innovative possibilities. Design thinking, as I understand it, has five steps. One, empathy. Two, defining the problem. Ideating solutions, that's a new word. Prototyping a solution and testing a solution. What's happening to your sense of humor? I introduced a new word, I expected you to laugh. I learned every day, I learned it this morning, ideating, ideating. Again, design thinking also emphasizes the benefit of failure. To succeed, you must fail at some stage in your journey. And again, as I said, by constantly seeking feedback and finding faults in our design, we can improve upon these faults and create a stronger outcome for the communities we work with. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that it's very beneficial to bring students into design and research opportunities in higher education, and this would foster a mindset that would drive transformation, that would offer model educational scenarios to follow, and that allows the creation of one's own pathways and toolkit, and that will permit the selection and creation of solutions for building an experience. The list of benefits, if I may say so, is endless. As Chancellor of your university, I'm happy to be associated with the establishment of the Design Thinking and Innovative Hub here on campus. It is my belief that the Design Thinking and Innovative Hub being inaugurated here today will serve as an avenue for many new ideas to be born from the mixed composition of students, staff, and the community of practice enthusiasts. I'm of the opinion that technological innovations churned out from the hub will help to increase accessibility to national development and government's flagship programs. For example, I foresee collaboration between the hub on one hand and the business community and the government on the other hand in the areas of technological development where incubators could develop new technological innovations to augment existing health and scientific breakthroughs and discoveries. Indeed, I see the design thinking innovative hub as a server and the Silicon Valley of staff, students, and idea initiators, even outside this university's ecosystem. The sustainability of the D-Hub is a vis management's commitment and support to ensure that the hub becomes a model worthy of emulation across other public and private campuses within and outside Ghana is of paramount interest to me and should be to all of us. I wish to express my profound support for this great initiative. I've always believed that our forefathers sacrificed a lot to get our nation thus far, and it's up to us to contribute immensely to develop our motherland. As a chancellor of this university, I am very confident that when we all put our individual efforts together, we would achieve very enviable results. I'm happy to see the presence of great men and women from industry, 
He has since the confident since that confidently informs me that there's a buy-in from industry, something which is desperately needed. I would personally like to thank all those taking time off, their busy shadows to be here, not only to grace the occasion, but also to contribute to its success. I thank all who have contributed in diverse ways to make today's event a reality. I am confident that this facility would attract brilliant students and knowledgeable faculty who are highly trained and motivated to intentionally engender innovation and creativity. This is going to be a model that would look up, everybody else will look up to. On that note, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and of course my chairman, I'd like to declare, declare this beautiful facility, the Design Thinking Innovative Hub, duly launched. Thank you.